friends, I'm Jess, and welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner-related content when I'm not feeling like death, and today will be my wrap-up for the month of January. It is currently February 25th, so we're just a smidge behind. But if you've been around for some of the live streams that have happened, meaning the one live stream that I've done, um, you'll know that I have been sick for most of February. So basically on January 31, I was struck down by the plague and was out for about two and a half weeks with the plague. And then, you know, took some time to like get back to where I felt like a normal human and then had to do, you know, all of like the, the things that need to be done around the house and all of those things. Filming kind of took a back seat, but but we're going to get through our January wrap up so we can talk about these books before I forget even more about them. We will also today be doing my wrap up, my haul for the month of January, and our first video of balancing the books bingo, which I will explain a little more when we get to that portion of the video. Um, today might be a little bit of a longer one, but I'm just going to put everything together because because you deserve all of the content immediately at this point. Let's be honest. Um, usually I will do these in the order of lowest rated to highest rated. Um, we're just going through in the order that I read them again, mostly because I've already forgotten most of what we would have talked about at this point because I've read a lot since then. Uh, so the first book that I picked up for the year, if you have been here before, you know typically that the first book I pick up is a nonfiction that has something to do with my goal for the year. So my goal for 2024 was to be better at time management. Don't know how that's going so far, um, but also the book that I picked up, which was Make Time by Jake Knapp and some other person, I actually ended up DNFing around 40%. Um, not because I thought it was bad or unhelpful, but because I feel like I already had a firm grasp of everything that was kind of going on in that because I know people who have read that book and I've watched like their videos and them talk about like scheduling and things like that. So I feel like everything that I was getting from that book, while from the firsthand account of the people who actually wrote the book, I was very bored because I felt like I already kind of knew everything they were talking about. And so I decided to DNF that and not waste my time on it because we were already like two weeks into the month at that point and I hadn't picked up anything else yet. We then read Dead Voices and Dark Waters by Katherine Arden. Uh, Dead Voices got 3.25 out of 5 stars. Dark Waters got 3.5 out of 5 stars. These are books two and three in the Small Spaces series. Um, there is a fourth book as well. I don't know if there's going to be any more after that, but I do know there is a fourth book as well that we haven't read. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about with these these are mid-grade and they are spooky and while I like the aspect of that and I like um like the aspect of these three friends being together and having to kind of fight this evil and each one of the books kind of focuses more prevalently on one of the children um so it kind of like bounces around a little bit between the three of them I do have some larger issues with this series because it is a mid-grade one of the main things that is a theme throughout this series through these three books at least has been the kids not telling their parents about the villain or the things that are happening to them that are bad and while I know that that's kind of a thing because it's like, oh, people won't believe me or whatever, it's not them saying that they shouldn't tell their parents because their parents wouldn't believe them. It's them saying they shouldn't tell their parents because the bad guy is saying, if you tell your parents, I'll hurt them too. And while yes, you should be, a, I mean, at that point, if there is a villain, you should be afraid for them. I feel like this is the wrong way to put that into a book series that is for small children because one of the things that we tell kids is that they should always go to a trusted adult and to their parent if someone is doing things to them that they don't that they shouldn't be doing and so that is one of the main things that um, sexual predators and people who harm children say is if you tell anyone then I'll do something to them too and so I feel like on that aspect of it it's kind of a bad thing to tell kids that in this story story sense because there's no there it's not challenged and while I don't think that that was a purposeful point from Catherine Arden I would be very cautious or conscious if you're giving these books to your mid-grade readers um 
discuss the books with them as they're reading them and kind of let them know that that's not really something that you condone in the real world because I feel like we want to protect our kids, you know? Um, again, it's make-believe, it's not real, it's just kind of something that I want to touch on. It's not, didn't really take away from my enjoyment of the series. Um, mostly at this point what I am not enjoying is the characters. I feel like they're not explored well enough and I feel like it's never really hard to guess who the bad guy is because it's going to be one of the characters that you see and you very rarely ever see any characters besides the three kids, so it's kind of obvious in that way. So those are the parts that I really are like taking away points from the book, but I just want, because I read these, because I have small children in my life and because that's one of the things that I always tell you guys, I try to read these from the perspective of a child, but also from the perspective of an adult giving them to their child. I feel like if you are letting your mid-grade kid read these books, that that should be something that you should discuss with them so that our kids are staying safe. Also, my battery is already dying and we're eight minutes in, so I guess I'm gonna charge the battery and then come back later. Cool. Hey, look at us, we're back and probably at a completely different angle. Way to wait for the battery to charge, so we're back. Let's talk about the next book. So the next book that I finished was Timeless by Gail Carriger. This is book five in the Alexia Terabody series. Um, also the final book in the series. And this series follows our main character, Alexia Terabody. Uh, she lives in a alternate historical London um, around, I believe like the 1900s, like the turn of the century and there are werewolves, vampires, and ghosts in this world. Alexia is soulless, which basically means that she is able to, if she touches a vampire or a werewolf, they will turn to human for that time while she's touching them, and she also has the ability to exercise ghosts. Um, people who have excess soul are often able to be turned into a vampire or a werewolf or become a ghost, um, so that kind of happens in some points of it. This is a romance with also a bit of um, like a lot of drama and things going on between the different um, communities of werewolves and vampires and humans and a really fun series that I really enjoyed. Um, there is a spinoff series from this that I do hope to pick up in the future as well and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book is one that I had as an arc that came out actually last year and that is Hex Education by Maureen Kilmer. I give that a 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character who 20 years prior while she was in college uh, accidentally set fire to the dorm rooms that she and her friends lived in and her and her two best friends. Basically they were practicing magic and the building burnt down and there was someone who was drastically injured in the fire and witchery is not really a known thing in this world and so the three women decide that they are not going to talk to each other they're going to move on and they're going to pretend like they basically nothing ever happened now some of the women continue using magic in their real life and some do not it has been 20 years there is a ceremony going on for the 20 year anniversary of this thing the woman who was injured her family is donating a bunch of money to the school I think um, they're like going to name a building after her or something and so they're going back for like the anniversary of this thing and then weird things start happening. To me, this book could have been better if we got to know the two friends a little better. I feel like they were very overly character style characters um, as far as like the two friends from the previous life. Also, when you haven't spoken to someone in 20 years, like they went from being, you know, the best of friends and then not really keeping up with each other for 20 years. But when they got back together, it was like no time had passed. And I know that we say that as a thing, but it's not like, it's not a real thing. You can say it was like no time passed as far as like the way that you get along, but it can't be like no time had passed, like you know everything about each other's lives. That was a little disconjoining for me. Um, and also the villain was very obvious, um, for me at least, who the villain of the story was going to be. I did really enjoy it though. I liked the magic. I liked the magic point of view from the main character and the epilogue was fantastic. I really liked the epilogue of the story. Um, there's not a lot of world building for the magic it's very light it's a very loose magic system you're not going to get like rules and regulations and things because our main characters don't really understand magic so they're not really going to be able to explain it to you um, but it was just an interesting way that the magic worked and I did enjoy that I then read The Engagement Party by Darby Kane this was the B&K book club book for January and I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars this book follows a group of friends I believe it is a couple who were friends, 
and then their two male friends from college. And then one of the male's friend's best friend, who's kind of like his girlfriend, but kind of not. And then the other guy, the reason why they're there, he's getting engaged, so his fiance, it's their engagement party. Um, they pick out like an Airbnb style place that everybody's going there. And what we don't know until we all get there and things start to happen is that these college friends have a secret in their past and that past is coming back to kick them in the ass. I felt like this had a very similar feel, um, not uh, necessarily plot wise, but just like vibe wise, was very similar to If We Were Villains um, from the aspect of having most of the story being the present, but getting little bits and peaks of the past. And also uh, Daisy Darker, because they're on an island with no way off. And so those vibes were very similar. I did really enjoy this book. It was really creepy. It had like all of the haunty, spooky atmosphere vibes as far as like being terrified that you're gonna be the next one to die and bodies showing up and just, there's a little bit of body gore in it as far as like the way that the people are murdered. And then you get like the backstory. This is one that has a bunch of twists at the end. So if you're not that person who likes twist after twist after twist at the end of a book, this one may not be for you. Um, I don't think it was too far out of left field. I did enjoy that. I do typically enjoy that. So that wasn't that surprising. I do think who like the main villain of the story is, um, again, was pretty obvious from the onset just by the way that people act. Um, maybe it's just because I've been reading a lot more of these like mystery thriller type dual timeline stories, um, but it, I find it to be a lot easier to guess who the villain's going to be than I used to when I started reading mystery thrillers, uh, but that's neither here nor there. The next book we're not going to talk a lot about that is Playing the Witch Card by KJ Delantonia. I gave that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was my high highest rated book of the month. Follows our main character who comes from a family of witches who basically they have a set of tarot cards that have been in their families for generations. And she, when she was younger, got rid of the deck, basically um, hid the deck from her family because she didn't want to accept the magic that her family had. And at this point in the story, her grandmother has passed away and left her her shop. And so she moves back to her grandma's hometown. She opens up the shop that used to be like a tea shop where her grandma did um, tarot readings and instead she is turning it into a bakery because she is this like well-renowned baker and she ends up accidentally baking tarot card cookies um, as like a entrance interview for a Halloween thing that the city has going on and the magic kind of starts doing things on its own and she really doesn't have any control over what her magic is doing and it is just the whole plot of spiel from there. This is a very very atmospherically fall vibe story. Um, again, it's set around Halloween time. There's a lot of like magic and witchcraft. It is very similar to um, like the Gilmore Girls vibe as far as like small town where the whole town gets involved in things and everybody's decorated and they kind of shun you if you don't decorate your things. And it very much has that vibe. Um, the villain, not obvious. There was a chapter ending that threw me for a loop. Um, if you want to know more about my full thoughts on this one, I do have a full review video for it. It was my first book that I picked up in the Library Explorer vlogs. So I will link episode one down below for you. Um, this was just a book that I randomly picked up at the library and I fucking loved it. And the last book that we have for the month is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I read this for my local indie bookstores book club. This year we are reading um, books that we may have picked up when we were in school. This was not one that I read when I was in school, but I did try to read it earlier in my 20s and DNF'd it. Would have DNF'd it again. I don't like this book. It's not my jam. Um, what I will say, um, I did write some of my more full thoughts in my review on Goodreads, and I'll link that down below because, again, I have read this so long ago that I can't tell you everything. But what I will say is that I'm trying to read these from the point of view of do I think this should still be taught in school? And while I see how this could have some bonuses to it as far as being something that you could learn from, I feel like books like this that are set in that time period but written by a white person should be paired with a book written by a black person who has experienced that style of uh, segregation or racism or just the transgressions that have gone against them. So while this book does have a good point of view of um, that time period in America, I think it should be set off by a comparison book 
by a black author. So for me, this book was really big about coming of age, learning about the injustices of the justice system and how racial bias plays into that, and also about um, communities and the way that um, people as a whole can affect the view of one person. And I think a book that would be a good comparison for this by a black author would be The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, um, which is a book that I love. I read like in the beginning of my booktube days. I think because it also deals with a lot of those same topics that it would be a good comparison book for this book. Um, as far as this book itself goes, I didn't really have problems with like the writing style um, other than just it's not my style. Um, for me, it was more the aspect of like taking the most absolute cliche issues with racism in that time period and put having that be the thing of the book. Um, and I definitely dislike the fact that the main cusp of this book is on the trial of a black man who was accused of raping a white woman. And so for me, in the era that we live in, where we believe that all women should be believed, when they say that this thing happens to them, I don't like the viewpoint of looking at this story and going, Okay, well, I believe that women should be believed, and I believe that the majority of women don't just say this to say it. They say it because it happened to them. So let's go back in time where this happened, and I just, it's a very icky feel as a reader because I want to both believe her, but I also know that she's lying to get this black man executed. And so it's like, it's just one of those things where like it's a very uncomfortable feeling which I know is the point um, but I don't read things to not be happy with what I'm reading so I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars it was an interesting read I liked the discussion about it from book club that really is the main thing for me um, the reason why I'm reading these books that I don't like is because it is book club and I like to go and have the conversation with my fellow readers oh look more light. I should have done that an hour ago. Anywho, now we're going to talk about the books that we hauled for the month. Um, we have two by Darcy Coates. We have The Haunting of Gillespie House and The Haunting of Rookward House. I have read both of these. Uh, the Haunting of Gillespie House deals with a girl who is given the opportunity to house sit for an older lady and she's basically just told, you know, have a fun time and she gets weird and like starts going into rooms that I wouldn't be going in and the house is haunted and you find out weird shit about what happened there in the past and she has to defeat a ghosty villain. The Haunting of Rookward House is a story about a guy who, who had been married and his wife was pregnant and something bad happened between the two of them um, and we don't know what that is but we know that something bad happened and that the entire community is against him and he is living with his mother. He lost his job. He lost his house. He lost pretty much everything when this thing happened and when he He's helping his mother clean out her attic. He finds a deed to a house, which is Rookward House, and his mother is like, oh, it's just this house that, you know, was given to me when I was a child. Um, I've never really been there. And he's like, well, we could fix this house up. We could sell this house, and then we could move somewhere else where nobody knows who I am. So he goes to this house, and he starts to work on it. Uh, basically, there's no cell phone service. There's nothing there, and the house is haunted because it's haunting of Rookward House. Um, and throughout the book, we learn about what happened in the past as far as what happened in Rookward House and why it has ghosts. We also learn about what happened in his past and it gets weird both in present day and in the past. I also picked up a copy of Other Words for Home by Yasmin Warga. I read this last year during the amazing readathon, so I will link my August wrap up down below if you want to know more about this book, uh, my full thoughts on it. This book follows Jude, who is a Muslim girl living in Syria. Her and her mother are moving from Syria and moving to her uncle's house in America because her mother is pregnant and Syria is not a safe place for her or her mother at this time. She is very sad because they leave behind her father and her older brother who is fighting um, for like the um, resistance party in Syria and so she's moving to America. She does luckily know the language but it's a very big culture shock for her. This book is written in verse so even though it looks kind of chunky it is a lot smaller than it looks. It has some very 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 beautiful lines in it. One that I actually put on a post-it note and sits on my shelf. Um, it is right here and it says hoping is the bravest thing a person can do. 
Um, this book made me weep, made me cry. It is mid-grade, it is beautiful, um, about learning about other cultures and about how to accept people for who they are. Um, if you have a mid-grade age kid in your life and you think they can handle the more difficult topics in this book, highly recommend it. Also a book that I've already read, The Book Club Hotel by Sarah Morgan. I read this at Christmas time. I always pick up Sarah Morgan at Christmas time. Um, and I really enjoyed this one. It's about three best friends who all have different styles of life. One is like very high up in the executive world, one who doesn't have a job but um, is raising her two twin children who are both seniors in high school, so she's about to be an empty nester, and one who recently lost her job and her fiance because he broke up with her and run off, and then she lost her job, so she has nothing going for her really. Um, and they're going to this hotel um, to have a book club, which is something that they do once a year to get together and, you know, spend time with each other because they live in opposite places of the country. And the innkeeper is a young woman who has a small child, and she, within a few years prior, had lost her husband to a weird accident, um, and it was his dream to run this hotel, this inn that they're in, and she's trying to figure out how to balance what she wants for the inn and what her husband wanted and how, you know, those two things can connect. And then we learn also how this woman connects to our three other main characters. Love this. It's super cute. Anytime you pick up a Sarah Morgan at Christmas time, you're gonna have a fun time. Spirit Hunters book three, Something Wicked by Ellen O. Also read this one maybe last year, maybe the year before. I don't really remember. The series follows Harper, who is a mid-grade age child. Uh, her family moves into a new house that seems to be haunted, and she learns from her grandmother, who says she can see ghosts, about ghosts and what's going on in the world and how to defeat them. It's a super cute series. It has some uh, interesting uh, things about while they're fighting the ghosts they are using her grandmother's culture in order to do that I think grandma's Korean it's Asian I can't remember what because it's been so long since I've read these um, but there's like parts of her culture in there and that's how they fight the ghosts and so that's an interesting aspect of it I really enjoyed the stories overall all three of these books were fantastic I also picked up Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson this is not a romance and the serial killer aspect is very small at the very beginning. This is more women's fiction, but I really enjoyed the story. I really connected with the main character um, in a way that hit me deep in the feels and made me weep. Um, it was a fun time. I enjoyed this. I read this either the beginning of last year or the end of 2022. Um, this was one that I had an arc for and I read it forever ago and I enjoyed it, so I decided to pick up a copy. The final book to haul and also a book that I read, uh, Payback's a Witch by Lana Harper. I've been reading this entire series and when I was reorganizing my shelves earlier, I realized I didn't know no copy of this book. I read this in 2022 um, in October when looking for a comp title for a book for Wallace. And it's not a comp title, but I did enjoy it. So I picked this up. It is about a town where there are four magical families that every so often have this battle for who's going to be like in control of the towns of magic for however many years. I don't really remember like the things but it's like a magical competition and it's sapphic and it is there's romances one and two and three are fantastic. Four is a piece of shit. Hopefully five is good. So those are the books that I hauled. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a bingo board and I'm gonna roll over here. What we're doing is this bingo board that I took from Leanne at Literary Diversions. I will link Leanne's video on the bingo board down below. So if you would like to make your own, you can absolutely do that. Um, Leanne has her own set of prompts. I chose my own set of prompts. That was an option for us. And as discussed earlier in the year, when TBR Takedown left, I decided I was going to be doing something like balancing the book style, where I would be trying to keep my unread physical TBR under 60 books. The caveat with that being that books in a series only count as one book. So like I have the entire 15 book series of the sweep series but that counts as one book on the unread TBR because I can't read books 2 through 15 anyway. I like having a variety to pick from but if I've got two 15 book series that's pretty much half of the TBR and do I have two 15 book series? I indeed do. I have other book series that are like 10 and 12 books so basically it would not be pretty. 
The problem with that is if I read a first book in a series, the book doesn't actually get to come off of the, of the, of the list. I mean, I could read book 12 in a 15 book series and it's still not off the list. I can read books one through 12 of a 15 book series and it still doesn't get to come off the list. So it's a little, you know, it's, it's going to be tricky, but we're going to roll with it and it's going to be a fun time. Um, so for balancing the books, that's that part. So what we're doing is balancing the books bingo. So as you can see, the top middle square is our under 60 physical TBR. So that is the balancing the books square for bingo. I want to hit that 10 times this year. The rule was that if I am over 60, I have until the end of the following month to get back under 60. Um, because I have really called through my TBR. Most of what I have are books that I bought last year. I don't have a lot left from previous years. So most of what I have are things that I'm very interested in reading. I just don't want to get back to the point where I was before, where I have so many books and I don't get around to reading them. And then my reading tastes change and then I don't want to read what I have anymore. So that is what that is for. So we are going to go over these squares, talk about what they mean, and then update you on where we should be for the month. So at the end of January, our first top left square is 12 books by 12 friends. I asked at the beginning of the year for 12 recommendations from 12 friends. I actually ended up with 13 on my list, um, but I want to have read 12 of those by the end of the year. Uh, at the end of January, we are at zero. Under 60 physical TBR, which is the balancing the book square that we just discussed, I was under 60 for the month of January. In fact, we started out with 47. I read four books off of my physical TBR and although I hauled a bunch of books they were all already read so they didn't count towards going on so we're actually sitting at 43 for the month so that gives us one month under 60. Our next square on the top is 24 new releases. I did not read any new releases in January, so that one's a big fat zero. The next row down is 12 library books, and I did read Playing the Witch Card, which was a library book, so we get one book for that square. The middle is 24 physical TBR backlist books, and as we discussed with Balancing the Books Bingo, I read four backlist books, so I get to take four books onto that. So we're down to 20 for the rest of the year. The next one is 12 book club books. And I read two book club books in January. That was The Engagement Party and To Kill a Mockingbird. Next is 10 rereads. And that is the bottom left square. And I did not have any rereads in January. The next square in the middle on the bottom is 10 big books, which are books over 500 pages. And I did not read any of those in January. And the final square is to have finished 10 series. And because I read Timeless in January, I indeed finished a series, which is fan-fucking-tastic. So you can get a look at the bingo board. This is what we're going to be going through. These are kind of like my main goals for the year to try to get to. Um, I have other things as well. Um, my goal is to get at least one bingo. You would imagine with only needing three prompts in a row, I should be able to do that. We'll see how that goes. I will set myself a reward for getting all nine squares. I don't know what that reward is going to be yet, but um, I'm going to set up a reward for all of the squares. But my goal is to get at least one bingo by the end of the year. And again, if you're interested in doing the bingo board from hell, I will link uh, Leanne's video down below. So we hauled some books, we read some books. I gotta find room for all of these books on my shelf. I've been in a serious urge to reorganize the shelves uh, by alphabetically by author's last name. So they're probably just gonna go in a pile until I decide if I'm actually going to do that or not, because there's no point in finding room for them on the shelf and then changing all of the shelves. That is all I have for today. I appreciate you guys being super patient with me, having not posted a video for multiple weeks at this point. Um, hopefully I'm feeling well enough to continue doing those in the future. I will be going to the library next month to film the next episode of Library Explorer. That is all I have for today. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a bear emoji in the comments down below if there is one. If there isn't, some kind of a forest animal or pick your favorite forest animal, whatever works for you. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.